So let's dive a little deeper now into what we are going to be utilizing in our new equipment with Honeywell. Yeah, so I think that was a very helpful overview from our Bosch experts on the regulations and the changing landscape. So as we are here today, um, Honeywell's newest offering is the Solstice 454B, which is the refrigerant. It's an A2L refrigerant that's designed to replace our 410A. However, I just want to point out that this refrigerant can only be used in new equipment. New so system. it is not mm -hmm. a retrofit solution, only meant for new equipment, um, and again, can be used in a wide variety of different um, HVAC applications from mini splits to unitary systems to heat pumps, such as the water source heat pumps recently launched uh, by Bosch, as well as in rooftop packaged units, um, chillers, the DX chillers, and also the VRF commercial systems that are that tend to be much larger systems. So with 454B, uh, it does have an ASHRAE classification of A2L, making it mildly flammable. However, from a GWP standpoint, it offers a 78% reduction in mm. GWP compared to the R410A, which is currently the most widely used refrigerant in these HVAC applications. So really a big drop there and uh, you know, a, a very good refrigerant in terms of how it performs compared to 410A as well. So we'll get into some of those details in the next few slides uh, with our experts, Ron and Doug here. Excellent, thank you. I yeah, appreciate it, Angela. Um, yeah, this is just a quick recap of the differences between 410A and 454B. You can see in the, in the left column there the, the components in 454B, got R32 and, and uh, YF. YF is the refrigerant that's most likely in your car if you've bought it in the last, what, around 10 years. Yeah. Um, so the interesting thing is 410A is a mixture of R32 and R125, 50-50. That's right. right. And then you see our percentages, 68.9 and 31.1, very, very uh, concise. And that's to match up with 410A as best as we can. And, and you can see that we really got close. Uh, mm -hmm. The GWP, Angeli said 78%. You can do the math there, 2088 to 466, really good drop. Capacity, you know, um, essentially the same COP. The efficiency is, a, is slightly better. Um, the discharge pressure is a little lower, um, has a slight bit of glide, 1.8 degrees, but uh, we've been dealing with refrigerants with seven, eight, nine de degrees of glide for many years. If anybody uh, needs help with glide, we've got some great training uh, information on glide. So if they have trouble with that, uh, give us a call. Yep. And then you've got the LFL. You can see there 11.25. That's a volume in percent that has to be in the air for it to even get any type of flame whatsoever. Um, and uh, Bosch talked about that earlier, and we'll go into that, what that LFL means in a little bit later, so. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that there was Glide with R410A. We didn't educate that enough, but we absolutely had Glide because it was that blended refrigerant of 32 and 125. So we are still gonna have some Glide, it's gonna be minimal, and so it's very important as technicians to be able to understand what Glide does in respect to subcooling and superheat because yes. it will change a few things and it's very important to know. So if you have any any struggles with understanding Glide, we highly encourage you to just hang in with us, join the conversations, connect with Honeywell, connect with Bosch. We've got some training videos out there. We've done quite a few things with the actual A1, A2L classifications. So there's a lot of training resources to keep you aware of the you know the installation and best practices when we're talking about glide um, yeah and, and uh, interesting thing i always say it uh yeah. the 400 series so those that don't know yep. what, all the 400 series oh. have glide <laughs> exactly all yeah. the 500 series have no glide so uh just a little tidbit there yeah definitely okay everybody probably has seen the the graph on the left this is from ashray You've got the, the first column there, the lower toxicity column. Those are all A's. Those are all um, not basically non-toxic. Um, and then you've got the numbers, uh, 1, 2L, two, 2, and 3. Those are uh, indications of the flammability. Um, you go over in the right column, you've got the B's. B is toxic, and then the numbers mean the same thing. So uh, ammonia is a B2L. 
So it's toxic. People forget it's also mildly flammable. They forget yeah. about the mildly flammable because they worry about the toxicity. They worry about toxicity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Very good point. laughs> uh, so the A1s, you're used to those, 448A, 410A, what, uh, 134A, R22 was an A1, um, 404A, 507, all those were A1s. So that's what you're used to. Um, and these refrigerants we're talking about today that we're going to in the future are A2Ls, uh, 454B, you see it in the yellow there. That's the one going to be primarily used for HVAC. Um, 454C and 455A will be used for uh, more, more for refrigeration. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and one thing we get when we talk to, to end users, customers, contractors, is they see A2L, they see the word flammable, and they're like, no, I don't want it. Forget about it. I'm not going to have anything to do with it because they don't really understand the, the, the levels of flammability. So we've got a couple videos here to kind of show the difference. People are used to propane. They're used to isobutane. You know, you cook with it. They're, they're used to what, what that can do, what that flammability is, and they think everything is that way. And uh, we're going to show you that, no, it's not all that way. Right. So this is inside of a refrigerator. The little black line on the left is the door of the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. You see that little flame that just went up on the top? A little bit of pressure from that, yeah. That's an A2L quote blowing up, right? Right. You can see the door open up a little bit. That's the pressure from that explosion, if you if you will. Um, so this is YF, this is similar to the 454B, 111 grams in this refrigerator that we're leaking. Okay. So this is, a, this is not a repeat, this is a continuous loop, we're leaking. And it just nothing seriously bad happens, right? Sure. With a so, high amount of ignition. I've got to remind the people that that's a significant amount of ignition that's being utilized to even attempt to get this A2L right. to do anything. Okay. Exactly. And, and then one, we've got, uh, yeah, the other one. The but, other one. Let me go grab that one real quick. And This is, this is isobutane, half the charge. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see that there's a slight difference here in what happens. And make sure that you prepare your ears. I'll turn the volume down just a little bit on this one because the first time I watched this one. And propane's a good refrigerator. We're not trying to knock it. it. It's just Great flammability is different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a lot different than an A2L. That's a lot different. And that's why AHR did all the work. AHR did all the work to test this to make sure that the A2Ls really can be safe. Um, and I think Bosch is going to get into the mitigation measures. We there are some differences to make sure it's, you know, really make sure it's safe. Um, but as far as flammability goes, the difference between an A2L and A3 is, is extremely significant, as you can see. We can talk about things like ignition energy and flame speed and all that stuff. We, we, when we first started doing this, we talked about that. Yes. You just don't get a sense of what it means, right? No, absolutely.